You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our new website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 13th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Value Voters Summit in my pants, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Values Voters Summit in your I, pants. I do. It's a, it's a lively summit. And speaking um, of pants. Yes, yes. We have yeah. a couple sponsors this week. Do you mind if I read the sponsors? Please do. I know you have a, sp- this is a special place in your heart for our sponsors. Our, this these sponsor are our fa- our especially our fake sponsors. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. want to thank, uh, for those of you in a fall fashion mood, it's never a bad time to put on some Dukakis khakis. Sensible pants for senseless times. When Donald Trump walks out in that stupid too big suit with the pointing at his private's red tie, click your remote to the off position and sit back in Dukakis khakis. Mike Dukakis didn't belong in a tank, but he was sensible, and so are you in your Dukakis khakis. And while you're being seasonably sensible, remember... Never wear Crocs. You'll always remember with Croc blockers. Croc blockers. Hey, man, don't wear those shoes. Don't wear those shoes. Just don't wear those shoes. It's not so easy reading that copy, is it, (laughs) Blue Gal? (laughs) Hey, but I'm the sound editor, so I can make it sound perfect. That's true. I sound like a dolt, and you sound... (laughs) Well, my wife is a genius, so we don't need to to, to gild the lily. This is also a for for real thing, by the way. uh There's an actual for real thing. Uh, Apparently, Chance the Rapper... Yes. Uh, today only has bought out all the tickets for all today's shows at two theaters in Chicago for Marshall, of the movie about Thorogood Marshall. Uh, right. And there's a theater at, at 1011 South Delano Court, and there's another one on 87th Street. And you'll have to do a little bit more research than that, because I can't do everything for you people. No, but if, but... You, if you Google Chance the Rapper Marshall, you'll find them. And, yeah, he's handing them out, apparently, handing out free tickets. for the, He wants everyone to see this yep. movie about Thurgood Marshall. And we want and, to see it, uh, too, but, you know, I don't live in Chicago no more. I live in beautiful Springfield with my beautiful wife and beautiful stepkids, and it's a wonderful place. Apparently, but. we have to set aside, what, five and a half, 15 hours for um, Blade Runner? Yes, How long is a, it? It's like a 50-hour movie? <laughs> well, the, the guys at Red Letter Media say, uh, what is it, Blade Runner uh, 2049, right. like 20 hours and 49-minute runtime. <laughs> Yeah. Which I think is kind of cool. Trademark, trademark Mike Stolakos or whatever his name is who, who does that thing. But it's it's a very long movie, um, apparently. We haven't seen it yet. But you know what we it, have but... seen? We saw Mr. Robot this week. We hear good things about it, though. Yes, we saw Mr. Robot this week, and it's, oh, it's still good. It is very it's, good. And it still... actually mentioned Donald Trump. That's why we're bringing it up. Yep, uh, pointedly and specifically, and it alluded to uh, the existence, perhaps, or the, the culpability, perhaps, of people who thought, you know what we should do, man? We should crash the whole system. <laughs> then something, something, proletariat uprising, and then something, something, shit will be awesome. Yeah. And I'm not giving any plot points <laughs> away to say that uh, the people who did that in this television show uh, – I should say people, I think that's fair to say, are having second thoughts as to the wisdom of their actions. Uh, Yeah, and and I did go and look up uh, an interview with the creator of the show. Yes. uh, Who is uh, Sam Esmail. Esmail, yes. Um, He talked about in the interview um, about why he put that in there. He said it had, uh, we felt responsibility for the election. Mm -hmm. He said that. Uh, it had nothing to do with whether we voted against Trump or not. We felt responsible, whether it was avoiding the signs or not voicing our side as much or taking it for granted. We felt some sort of responsibility. It felt wrong not to include that really strong reaction and strong feeling in the show. Good for him. Because it overlapped with what Elliot was experiencing in that montage. Yeah, it's a very real-time, real event. I just wish yeah. that... NBC and MSNBC and CNN uh-huh. had that feeling of just look. We took for granted that America was an onward and upward thing. Yeah. And that we would not be, and we, from our bubble in New York City, where all our friends are educated and we are all paid well and everybody has a college degree and we're all, you know, urban and believe, you know, are. 
exposed to different people from different parts of the world all day long. We just thought this is inevitable that, of course, we're going to go ahead and elect a sane person over a Mm -hmm. crazy racist person. Right. They 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 assumed the and this is this is a a, a good um, segue into probably our larger show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, you should tell people about what arrived in the mail and you put on and I put on for the show. Yeah. Well, I'm on the list of influencers for um, USA Network's uh, promotion department for Mr. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you get retweeted by the I, actual. I uh, get retweeted by. Or I get no. He liked my tweet. He liked yeah. my whoever it was at at um the twitter account is who at who is mr robot uh-huh. and uh yeah i they, they dm me they direct message me and say we're gonna send you something and they did this to a lot of other people i well, would love to just, see just who you. it was no it wasn't just me no. um i have a feeling that a lot of the people that they send this to are on instagram instead of on twitter because yeah. and i'm my children are on instagram that is not where I exist, but mommy, mommy, I understand that is the thing for the young people. So yes. uh, anyway, uh, they sent us a mask, the plastic mask from Mr. Robot. A genuine Mr. Robot plastic, plastic mask. mask and uh, asked mm-hmm. us nicely <laughs> yes. if you if you would be willing to put it on. And of course, I was willing, more than willing to put it on sure. uh, for Twitter, do a selfie and uh, use a, use their hashtag and so forth. And um, and I wouldn't do it for a show that I didn't watch and love. <laughs> right. So right. that's the point, I think. And, and you and, will see a picture of me out there. And with there's my, a picture uh, of you out there just, yeah. just looking like yourself in that. Really, that basically, that's looking like Necktie and, yeah. and uh, mustache <laughs> and uh, wearing the mask. <laughs> um, but uh, in all honesty, um, I think this season from what the first episode was like uh-huh. they have really figured out that uh and this this also dovetails with our whole podcast this week um they need to tell a story it yes. can't just be weirdness 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 let's you know uh blow up the system and that's the that's the end of it yeah uh and have a lot of weird people and you don't know where you don't know who's on what side and you everyone's weird and everyone's doing everything it's like no you need and it's okay to use an old plot, right? Yes. The older, the better. The older, the better. In fact, yeah. there is, I, I don't think it's spoiling it at all to say, there's a segment in the first episode of season three that just came out, and you can go watch it on demand, uh, where they basically take a scene out of Robin Hood. <laughs> they yeah. take a scene out of Errol Flynn's Robin Hood, where... <laughs> You know, we need to catch Robin Hood. What are we going to do? Well, let's have an archery contest, you right. know? And when we find out who wins the archery contest, we will have Robin Hood. That'll be it. Mm-hmm. And they, they pretty much do just that in this episode. And, and it, with a strong, uh, deliberate film noir overlay. There is, and, it, and a lot of reviewers have said that, that this yep. season is film noir. And it absolutely has the, you know, the city that never sleeps, the dark right. side of the city and... And the other thing is, I know there was Trump and there was this and that, but I really liked the fact that the power had been out for two weeks. Yeah. And that was such a nod to Puerto Rico hmm? uh, that you couldn't miss it. That if if what is happening in Puerto Rico was happening in New York City, the world would be coming to an end. Mm-hmm. And that's just we the media just doesn't want to stay with any story that long. Well, I'm not so, sure based on the shooting schedule, that it was a nod to Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm not... Well, I don't know either, but I... For me, it felt like a nod to Puerto it, Rico. Oh, it's it's it, th- <laughs> and the that's fact that it was it was literally two weeks. They did say two weeks in the episode, which yeah. they could have done that part of it last minute. And they it have was cut, two weeks, so they have cut um, and added parts at the very very last right. minute of this to make it even more topical. Um, mm-hmm. The last two years, yes, they and have. they they learned the lesson that the Wachowskis never never learned, which is okay. The first season was just supposed to be a movie, <laughs> and they and the, apparently USA said no, make it a TV series. And Sam Asmail said, "Oh, okay, I'll take my three-hour product and turn it into a thirteen-hour thing," which was awesome, which blew the doors off the place. Um, and well, let's have some more. <laughs> well, oh, okay, the story is sort of okay. Here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna have an actual story. We're gonna have an actual plot, and it's gonna arc over this length of time, and it's gonna have these elements. Um, the Wachowskis look like they just got caught uh, in the headlights and said, oh, crap, we got to throw together two more. OK, 
the Earth's core is full of hippies. <laughs> And, you know, and, and you could just see the sort of the weakness in their – not their technique because their te- technique is excellent. But the, the their plot just ran out. This right. This is the, sort of the same thing that happened with Game of Thrones. Right, um, right. They, they reached the point beyond which the author had written and they mm-hmm. sort of lost their gar- guard ra- guide rails and wandered around uh, – not, I'm not saying anything good or bad, but this is definitely sort of off book. Right. And Sam Esmail took advantage of that and said, no, I'm going to tell a real – Story, a real honest to God story with with villains and heroes and arcs and twists and all the mm-hmm. things you love about mm-hmm. a story, mm-hmm. and it's going to be as topical as today's headline. Right, um, and and but. there's and and it's very clear now to me, um, sort of we are we are in the hands of someone who has figured out a plot for this show, mm-hmm. and there are characters who are sort of um, shall we say uh, split personality. <laughs> yes, and they're played by different people. The two personalities are played by different people, and you are to to know from the way they film it that this is the same person being two different separate personalities. Mm -hmm. And it makes total sense now that who this person is, when they become this other person, when they are the the original person they are, Mm -hmm. and it helps the plot along. It really does. And and so just I, I recommend it if you have never watched Mr. Robot before, go back. Get caught up um, and and read. You know, you can you can actually read about it and then start season three. I think I think yeah. starting with season three, you're not going to miss that much if if you've read up on the show. And uh, adding and then, a new adding a new main character is always risky, oh, but I yeah, think they did an yeah, excellent job. They did job. an excellent job yes, with the new character. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, no, they really did. Uh, and then we also want to recommend if you haven't seen it on Netflix, a show that we binge watched yes. last weekend. Yes. Uh, called Atypical. Yes. And uh, we don't know how they got into our house to record our doings <laughs> and put them on a TV show. <laughs> yeah, except for one. Oh, yeah. Um, they, the, you're, not, uh, you're not screwing the bartender, are you? No, I'm not screwing okay. any bartenders. Okay, uh, good. Or having any kind of crisis along those lines. Um, but this uh, show is about a teenage boy with high-functioning autism. Um it is in stark contrast, in my personal opinion, to The Good Doctor, which is on ABC, which is also about a young man with high-functioning autism. No, no, he has magic powers. He has magic powers. They're because... calling autism. He's a magic <laughs> yeah. doctor man who exactly. knows everything about everything. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he can yeah. perform surgery on the floor of an airport. Heart surgery, yeah. With I his mean... mind. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. The Good Doctor takes uh, the magic disabled person, right. you know, and, and makes it about... That and, and, and all the other characters, well, many of them lean back and just say, "You don't understand." He sees the world like none of us could. Yeah. <laughs> and anytime he does open his mouth to talk with someone about feelings, he's got everything figured out immediately. Right. Like he speaks truth, man. And no, good doctor, yeah. I don't recommend. No. Uh, but I'm getting sorry. back to atypical. Yes, uh, highly recommend. The, the every single character in the show is believable, is true to life, in my and personal lives, opinion. And lives here. And lives in this house. Yes. <laughs> or has or has spent the night in this house. Yes, I think abs- you absolutely. and I uh, were pretty, it was pretty clear to us that the young man in this who uh-huh. uh, is is really played very, very well. Not only beca- because he has autism, but because he has immaturity issues. Right. Exactly. And so he's a really fully formed human being, not just autism plays a part in his life, but him just not having experiences with girls and friendships and uh, being able to just get along with other people because he hasn't experienced it is a big part of it. And and uh, we just loved it. I think I think I speak for you. It was absolutely great. And And it is it is up for renewal. So there there are no villains in the show. No, but there There's are no, human beings who make exactly. huge mistakes. Huge mistakes. Yes. Yeah, and I love that. I absolutely love that because yeah. it's it's yeah. a show about it. Really, is, it's a comedy of a sort, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a situation comedy. The situation in which they find themselves is the is the thing is the genesis of the comedy. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very good. It's and, very and, very and good. you and I were talking about how we didn't think that the main character was our son. No, but our son has friends like him. Yeah, sure as hell does. <laughs> sure as hell does. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, wanna... the name of the show again is Atypical. Atypical. It's on Netflix, and all the seasons, all the episodes. I think there's seven. It's damn good. Are on Netflix, and you should watch it this weekend. You'll enjoy it. 
All right. I, I wanted to loop back just to say one last thing about mm-hmm. um, the mistake that the uh, the the Sam Esmail mm. acknowledged and that the rest of the media has yet to acknowledge. Yes, right. They, like many people in this country, treat our political system as if it's a natural resource that can be infinitely exploited and abused. Yeah. That they can just cut down. You can just. It's a forest you can clear cut forever. It's it's an oil well you can drill forever. It's an ocean you can shit in forever, and it's never going to actually come back to bite you. You can dump all the shit in the world you want into this body of water, and nature will somehow figure it out and fix it, and it'll be fine. And you can you can call the government you know uh, monstrous, and you can shit on people who work in it, and you can you can run an entire political party based on destroying the federal government for 30, 40 years, and treat them as if they're just partners. They're just normal American political party and partners, and we're all interested in the same thing. And the news media can get away with it and get away with it and get away with it and put these people on the air and and keep dragging them back from political oblivion to, to resuscitate their careers and keep telling themselves that as long as we keep pitching the both sides bullshit, this stuff will never come back to haunt us. Mm-hmm. And no matter how much we abuse it, it really is the mom figure in, in the universe. No matter how much we abuse it, no matter how much we treat them horribly, they'll take us back and fix our boo-boos and everything will be okay. So we can just – Shit all over the process. We can call Hillary everything but a child of God. We can basically say she's just as bad as Donald Trump because that's what our ratings require. But in the end, some magical outside force, basically the Democratic Party, will come in and save us. Mm -hmm. And we can be as irresponsible and as reckless and as stupid as we want because – someone else will come save us. It's the same thing as as uh, as what I've said before about herd immunity for mm-hmm. um, for anti-vaxxers. I don't have to vaccinate my kids. I can be as reckless and dumb as I want. Everyone else behaving responsibly will protect me so that I can be as crackpot and goofy and shitty as I want to be. And it turned out that's not true. Mm-hmm. It turns out if you, if you attack something, another cut it and pollute it and cripple it for long enough, it falls apart. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. what happened in November of last year. Our political system finally collapsed on itself because the abuse that had been heaped on it and the, and the, the, the massive amounts of treason yep. and, and, and uh, sabotage yep. that had been countenanced and excused and forgotten on the part of the Republican Party finally caught up with our political system. Mm-hmm. And now we're living in the wreckage of that thing. Right, because, uh, because we've convinced oh, 32% of the public consciously and on purpose Mm -hmm. we have convinced them that government's evil that barack obama was you know a kenyan and all of the lies that fox news tells and all of that is uh true they believe it and most importantly Mm -hmm. and you've said this many times before um that they will never be held accountable for anything right right that and and they they are you know a constitutional conservative i'm an independent yeah. Right. And so it doesn't matter what they do or how they think. They're right. We're wrong. We want, They just want to win and they will have suffer no consequences. And, and so far, that's true. Well, to, it's, to, it's we're going to get into health care in a minute. I know people yeah. are probably waiting for us to do that. Yes. So let's rock um, and roll, baby. We're going to rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I, I think what you just said is so important, which is mm-hmm. if we don't attack this at the root... <laughs> Right. It's just going to recycle itself. And Absolutely. we'll be back in 15 years, 20 years to a new Six Republican years. president who wants to take away health care right. or or roll back rights for women or whatever it is. And Clean coal. In the, in, in the name of the Bible. Right. right. Uh, okay. So health care and Donald Trump and Donald Trump being an idiot. I wrote about this yesterday. And, uh, you know, the immediate reaction on Twitter was, okay, Donald, you own this now. You have... Right written an executive order. By the way, the executive order it is like everything else Donald Trump has ever done that regards policy, which is it looks like something he scribbled at 8.30 in the morning and turned in at 9, right? right? You know, last minute assignment. Uh, it doesn't have any specifics. It doesn't have any, uh, it, it's, you know, the agencies will come up with something and have rules at the end of the year. Well, there's if that's the way it's going to go in the process, then there's uh, six months of public comment <laughs> time in right. an election year, right. you know, in a congressional election year. So that's really interesting. Uh, and and he's cutting and undercutting Obamacare. 
just because he can and just because that's the whole purpose of his presidency. Right. And uh, I am not impressed. And this has been my thing uh, ever since yesterday, which is not today, Satan. I'm just... I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm upset that my son, I don't know what his insurance is going to be after November 1st. Mm -hmm. I have gotten through to Medicaid, but I'm still up in the air. That upsets me. That's something personal that I have to do. Donald Trump does not impress me. And uh, there are a host of other problems that Donald Trump has that are coming to get him, including us moms of kids with special needs who need insurance and everybody that needs insurance. This this. This whole situation is polling now at about 75% against what Donald Trump did yesterday. Yes. Uh, It's bad. And people that know (laughs) how Mm -hmm. elections go are saying this is like red alert for the Republican Party. This is so bad, what he just did. And 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 we're the ones who are uh, obliged Mm-hmm. To remember our history, learn from history, and and inform people, here's what they're going to try to do next. Yep. And we need to throw ourselves in front of them. And, and the and... lifeboats will not take <clears throat> off from the shore. They can't. No. We can't no. let them. No. Um, I want to interrupt this because this is on topic. Um, there was an article today in, I guess this came out yesterday, in our local indie rag, uh-huh. uh, which is called Illinois Times. Uh, and it is an article about... Uh, a training opportunity that educators had in Springfield and around the state of Illinois, uh, sponsored by the Illinois Education Association Union, Teachers Union, Go Teachers Union, Mm -hmm. and also the Illinois chapter of the American Academy of Pediatricians. And they are working together uh, to figure out um, why children come to school so fucking messed up. Yeah. Because that's what's happening. Um, It's not just... Coming from a home with opioid addiction, it's coming from a home where one parent is incarcerated. It's uh-huh. they're coming from a home where mom's beaten up. Uh, they're coming from a home when, where there is no dad, and there's poverty, and there's a lack of resources to even deal with the poverty. On and on and on. But it is it is getting to the point where it's clear this is affecting the school day. Every day, all the time. Uh-huh. And uh, in 1998, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, this is a long Ooh. time ago, 1998, Ooh. 19 yeah. years ago, um, this, uh, came up with a diagnosis called ACE, which is Adverse Childhood Experiences, which is all of the things that I just said to you. Um, and the CDC discovered a stunning link between adult health issues like heart conditions, depression, cancer diabetes, and adverse childhood experiences. And that does not surprise me at all. (laughs) Uh, But um, persistent, this is the paragraph that I want to read to you because it's absolutely related to what a lot of us experienced yesterday when Uh Donald Trump wrote an executive order to undercut our health insurance. To blow it up. On purpose to toss a grenade right in the middle of the Affordable Care Act because he can. Because he can. Here is the paragraph. Mm -hmm. Persistent exposure to adverse childhood experiences causes a person to go into toxic stress, Mm -hmm. trauma which affects the brain. With the brain in toxic stress, a person is incapable of coping and reacts with a fight, flight, or freeze response. A student facing this trauma cannot learn because the brain has shut down in reaction to the stress. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds dismal and terrible. And a lot of us have felt like shutting down because of this. Just Mm -hmm. it's it's devastating. It's scary. uh, You don't feel safe, et cetera. What this article points out as as they went through and did more training and more studying and uh, these people from that they had interviewed in 1998 were adults. And they looked at their childhoods and so forth. And what they discovered from the adults who made it, who found ways to manage their health and so forth, the difference was, did they have, and I mean this literally, this is what the article says, one caring adult in their life? Yep. A grandmother, a teacher, a minister, anyone. Did they have one caring adult in their life? If they had one caring adult in their life, they made it. If they uh, didn't have one caring adult in their life, their lives were incarceration, substance abuse, 
you know, it, it the the results of this ACE, this uh, adverse childhood experiences, is terrible. Mm -hmm. But there is an inoculation and a cure, and the cure is one caring adult. Right. And I want everyone listening to my voice who feels this stress about health care to find one caring adult in your life. Mm -hmm. If it's this podcast, great. <laughs> I hope you can find face-to-face -face as well one caring adult that you can connect with that shares your pain that wants to do something and also this is this is a call for all of us to be that caring adult right, right. exactly be exactly. the person who cares who wants to do something who wants to take action mm -hmm. uh all of us should be looking at the voting record of our congressperson. And if your congressman voted for, I said this last week, for the House budget or stood behind, if your senator or congressman stood behind the president, so-called president, uh, yesterday, you need to write a letter to your newspaper. Yes, you and do. And you need to say what that person just did to you personally. Mm-hmm. If you have a good congressman, a good senator, somebody mm -hmm. who supports you, you should also write a letter to your newspaper and say, I want to thank Senator Durbin. Uh -huh. I want to thank, you know, whoever your congressperson. Senator is. Duckworth. Senator Duckworth is another one who's great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're very blessed in Illinois with our senators, not so much with our House members. Nope. Although I will say uh, our congressman, Rodney Davis, uh, was not one of the 69 Republicans who voted against aid for Puerto Rico. He And he actually, one of my friends, wrote a letter to him and got a response back immediately saying, no, 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 I really want to see Puerto Rico thrive, and I, I am for staying there just like we do are in Houston and in Florida, mm -hmm. staying till the end, staying until everything is fixed. Which so is great. He, well, great. You know, you got to give credit where credit is due. He also voted uh, to take my kids' health care away. He also oh, voted so. to take your kids' health care away. Right. And that's, he, we that's are it. not going to vote for him. <laughs> no, that's a, that, that's a bridge that yeah. uh, cannot yeah. be unburned. No, it cannot. Uh, and he wrote me a four-page letter about how, you know, he actually does care. Uh, no, you voted more than once to take away my children's health insurance. And yep. that is unacceptable. So, uh, but you, this is the point. Find another person, take a specific action, and that does not mean send a tweet. That means uh. write a letter, go to a march, go to a coffee shop and have a meeting about it and talk about what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, healthcare is unfortunately taking an awful lot of oxygen out of the room of mm -hmm. what we can work on, but we need to work on a whole host of issues we've got. And we're going to talk about that, you know, the climate change, the, the EPA, the Iran deal. I mean, Immigration. It's exhausting. It, the whole know, thing the, is exhausting. Everyone does um, the list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but get together with other human beings who care mm -hmm. uh, and uh, make sure that you inoculate yourself and heal yourself from this toxic stress because it hurts. <laughs> I, I can vouch for that. It hurts. Yeah, it physically hurts. And I can, I can vouch I, for You and I are have a rule, don't we, that we only do. one of us can lose our minds at, at a That's time. Right. And we're pretty good about that, pretty we rigorous pretty about, about that rule. We really are. We do very well balancing things out. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and, then, and then sometimes this toxic stress and and things kind of hit you uh, unexpectedly. I was expecting this thing with Trump, so that helped a little bit just to cushion my own emotional blow. I knew he, he was going to be a jackass. I didn't realize that his executive order was going to be this stupid, which actually helped me um, cope with it. And when I was reading um, a lot of the other things that people were writing about and how the insurance companies are actually inoculating themselves against yeah. Trump, um, that helped. But that doesn't mean that six million people aren't going to not be able to afford health insurance in a year and a half right. uh, if this goes on. So we have to continue to work to stop it. Right. Um, but something did hit me this week uh, unexpectedly. And you and I are working and teaching a class in spiritual journaling for our church. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But in preparation for that class Wednesday night, I was looking at a Bible study website and found an article. And it it was about, you know, Bible verses that help you through tough times or something like that. It was not, it was innocuous. It was, you know, just a article giving examples from the Bible that were positive. And I'm like, okay, this is great. Turns out it was a blog post. <laughs> huh. 
And a, this blog post had a comment thread at the bottom of it. And I said, oh. I'll, sc- I'll scroll down and see if anyone else has added another verse or done something that might be positive or has a testimony about how it helped them or, you know, something I might be able to share. Don't trust Breitbart. They've gone globalist. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Henry Kissinger, Trilateral Commission. Breitbart can't be trusted. Right. They've uh, gone not left. Conservative left just... enough. Right. <laughs> not conservative enough. Right. Not conservative enough. Cuck, cuck, cuck. Yeah. And, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> is it everywhere? Yes, it is everywhere. And I, I came to you and I said, you know, I, I'll call you Drift Glass now. I called you by your actual first name. I want you guys to know, so people have asked that. Do I call you Drift Glass around the house? No. I call it, When we're talking podcast, I do. She does, because um, we're prepping. But around the house, I'm just, what the fuck? And what, That's I my go, name. Honey, is this this is terrible? I'm sitting here trying to study, you know, Bible verses in preparation for our class, and there's a comment on not conservative enough, cuck, Breitbart, blah blah blah, and I'm just not sure whether there's any escape from this kind of insanity. And how does someone get to that point of Breitbart isn't trustworthy because it's not conservative enough, and and you know, it's no true Scotsman behavior about bright oh, uh, of all things. They they get there by practice, years and years of practice. Well, and you, your response to me was really helpful. And oh, I, I and, and thematic in terms of what we want to talk about today. And this this also relates to not today, Satan, right? Right, right. Uh, talk about the the two forces in the world. Oh, that yeah. you mentioned to me. Yeah, there's a there. Basically, uh, this is this is part of our public service. <laughs> Uh, okay. in, in which we attempt to explain and or, or help people provide provide people with a framework in which to understand what's going on to them, around them, and with them, with family members and their political system. Uh, it doesn't mean we have an answer as to how to fix it other than organize, 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 and vote, 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 and contribute, 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 and, and do all the things that you do and just you know get more people involved. But the upshot is – um, the reason your Uncle Liberty is crazy, Uncle Liberty, and the reason the Republican Party is crazy, and the, and the reason that that it has manifested itself as a giant orange um, racist asshole named Donald Trump, mm-hmm. is that there's two irreconcilable forces in conflict within Crazy Uncle Liberty. Crazy Uncle Liberty, like every human being in the world, first of all needs to explain the world to him or herself. They have to know what the world is, how it works. What the rules are, why things, you know, why the sun rises and sets. Every creation myth is a story. This is all storytelling. These just, this is the oldest profession in the world. It's telling of stories is is how we as a species moved ourselves forward. We we tell each other information, we exchange it, we update it when it's wrong. But explaining the world to ourselves through narrative is absolutely necessary. Uh, to survive, because if if you don't have an explanation for how the world is, the world is just chaos. It's it's it, it really is like living the worst autistic um, spectrum disorder you can imagine, where everything is overwhelming, nothing makes any sense, everything's just noise and light and chaos, and nothing makes any sense. So that's what you need to do to survive as a human being. On the other hand, Crazy Uncle Liberty also needs to deny the world mm-hmm. based on the evidence of his own senses. He cannot believe that Donald Trump is everything that Donald Trump is. He cannot believe that the Republican Party is what they are. He cannot believe the liberals were right all along. He cannot believe that guns are are a, a, a blight on society. He cannot believe that he himself has changed his political position over and over and over again, depending on who's in power. He can't believe that he used to be this thing and is now that thing. He can't believe that deficits matter, but they don't matter. He can't believe that immigrants aren't the cause of every one of his problems in the world. He can't believe anything. And the problem is the world of his senses is closing in on him Mm -hmm. because everything he believes is bullshit Mm -hmm. and everyone he trusts lies to him all the time. So the explanation for his world is actually very simple. You're a moron. (laughs) <laughs> you you have trusted people who have fucking lied to you for decades. They've abused you. They've they've used you, and you have become complicit in your own destruction. You have given them power over your brain. You have let, as I've said before, you let Rush Limbaugh take a shit in your skull for twenty five years, mm-hmm. and you are the result of that process. And since Crazy Uncle Liberty cannot accept that fact, would rather die than accept that fact. Would rather burn the world down, which is what Donald Trump is. It's his attempt to burn the world of factual reality down Yeah, yeah. because it's so horrifying to him. Um, this is what Karl Rove promised. 
Carl Rove promised them that they'd never lose again. Mm-hmm. So, you can, so you can take your dick out now and wave it around all you want because you can be as big an asshole as you want. You can be the biggest racist you want. You can be out and proud as a Klansman because we're never going to lose again. And then they lost. And that's mm-hmm. when that's when they fucking snapped. <laughs> when yeah. they lost to a black man from Chicago who's a Democrat. They Twice. snapped. Yep. Yep. And those people cannot accept that reality. So Barack Obama must be a king. Yep. And he must be trying to murder my grandmother with death panels. So – The way that Crazy Uncle Liberty reconciles his basic mammalian need to explain the world through narrative Mm -hmm. and his basic – second basic need to deny everything about the world that is clear and present in everyone's life and you can see it as plain as the nose on your face Mm -hmm. is to invent crazier and crazier conspiracy theories Mm -hmm. and crazier Mm -hmm. and crazier secret underground collusions and the liberal media and the liberals are in everything and it's the trilateral commission and henry kissinger yeah. and that's why he is the way he that's why they believe crazier and crazier shit every year because the only alternative they're now faced with to reconcile these two things is to acknowledge that we on the left have been right about them all along mm-hmm. and, and i want to interject uh something that theolo theolo gop said our, our angel nerd, our angel nerd. Uh, she was a caller um, on uh, another podcast. Let me just put it that way. Uh, it, and it was she had an excellent call. She talked about visiting her um, crazy right wing uh, religious fundamentalist conservative relatives in Texas, East Texas, mm-hmm. and how uh, and, and from a theological standpoint, how they really many of them really truly believe that the world is going to end in their lifetime and they will be carried up in the rapture and everyone else will go to hell. Right. And you, the only thing you have to do to be saved is accept Jesus Christ as your savior. Works don't matter. Being an asshole doesn't matter. Being a racist doesn't matter. Uh, be sleeping around doesn't matter. None of that matters. Just accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and savior. And within my lifetime, I'm going to be carried up to heaven and be with Jesus. And and that is a sure thing. And how believing that leads to some really bad choices. Oh, yeah. But what what you said, too, about uh, the need to deny the world, there is at this point, and and I think this, this ties in very well with voting for Trump, too. There's a need to deny where they are in their life which yes. is near the end. Yes. You are closer to the end of your life than you are to the beginning of your life. And you are facing uh, mortality and perhaps facing a nursing home, perhaps facing some really scary times where um, what is really important is to elect a leader who's older than I am, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yep. Because then I know I'm young and I'm somebody who, who will survive everything. Well, uh, elect a leader who's just like me. And just like me, he watches old, Fox. Watches he Fox, Fox. He golfs. He he's lies. Got, he's got common sense solutions that are just based on look at that there. That needs to be fixed. He, Obamacare is terrible because Hannity told me, and he's been telling me that for seven years, and and on and on. But the anxiety behind that, and the need to deny that that anxiety even exists, is fixed with certainty. About I'm going to heaven. The world to come. Uh, right. Republicans will take care of everything. Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, liberals are the whole problem. And um, I found it very interesting that uh, Donald Trump decided to make decides all the time to make his arguments about old white people versus the rest of the world. Have you noticed mm-hmm. that? It's yeah. not just, I mean, there is this element of horrible racism that goes on. Yeah. But it's not just that. It's, we're going to take care of our people. I mean, he literally said that at the podium at the White House yesterday when he's going to sign this executive order. We're going to take care of our people. And you know who he's talking about. Of course I know who he's talking And then he forgot to sign the executive order. Because he's I mean, a this is... <laughs> doddering old racist, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So the fact that... He is literally, in his mind, I mean, at the podium, building a wall around the Fox News viewership, the 32%, you know, those are the ones that are going to be safe. It's that same theology of we're going to be all right, because whether we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior or Donald Trump as our personal savior, that is all we need to do. Well, and then everything will be fine. And and there's a there's a missing piece of that. Uh huh. 
uh, which does manifest itself in um, if it was just we're just going to take care of our people. Yeah, that's that could be relatively benign. It's not, but it could be. Mm -hmm. But we also have to. It, it's not sufficient if you're if you live if you're dependent on a pathological lie mm -hmm. to keep the world at bay. It is not sufficient to simply take care of your people. You also have to have an enemy. Oh well, yeah, you're, yeah. You also have yeah. to have someone in the external universe that you actually enjoy inflicting pain on right, because right. they're the problem. And, and the that more makes you, you win. Yeah. And the more you yeah. hurt them, the more – see, this is the thing. Donald Trump um, likes hurting people. He does. He likes he inflicting does. misery yeah. and doubt mm -hmm. and dread mm -hmm. and fear, mm -hmm. especially on the weak and the vulnerable because that's mm -hmm. what kind of sociopathic thug he is. Right. He is in that regard like every other Republican because what they love doing more than anything else is making libtards cry. Right. And so part of the formulation, part of the, the way they reconcile their, their internal, irreconcilable internal conflict is we have to have a, a reason. To, I have to externalize the, the pain I'm feeling and the absolute confusion and dread I'm feeling over the fact that I am the problem. And I need to put that into the outer world and attack it as if it were an external thing to me and my target. And the targets are always the same. Go back and, and look at the Nazi party. The targets are always the same. Mm -hmm. they're, they're intellectuals. They're gays. They're unionists. They're religious outsiders. They're communists, liberals. They're all, they're all the same people. They're always the same people. And the ideology that drives it must infect everything. There can't be a scrap left anywhere of anyone who believes anything but what I believe because they're the fucking enemy. We have to eradicate them. That's why you're going to go into Bible threads and find mm -hmm. people ranting about Breitbart because they really need to root out the, the, uh, the internal enemy everywhere. And they will not stop until they age out of their mortal shells and die or until they are forced to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's where activism comes in, because at this point, uh, we are well past the shells landing on Fort Sumter. Yeah. We are at yeah. war with these people. Um, it is still a, a civilized war. It's still a war of words and 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 not deeds. But make no mistake, we can't exist as a country I've said this before, half fox and half free. We cannot, we cannot exist. Donald Trump is making sure that we all know that it's my way or the highway. And we're going to either become a nation of fucking Sean Hannity's or, we, or, or a nation of Elizabeth Warren's and, uh, and Dick Durbin's and mm -hmm. kind people who care about their country. But those two things cannot coexist. And one of them is internally uh, self-destructing. Mm -hmm. Right in front of us. And it, it, it will take victims. It will take hostages to protect itself. It is a toxic lie. The entire GOP depends on, on defending this toxic lie to the death. And it will take hostages. It will start uh, wars. The, it, will, it will threaten the planet uh, to protect the lie. And that's why, the, seriously, and I mean this quite seriously, the only lesson that Donald Trump learned from the Bush administration is start a war and you'll be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Start a mm -hmm. war, go out and blow somebody up, invade some fucking country, cause some kind of disaster somewhere, lie us into the wrong war, and the media will roll over. And I can sit here and make the, the dumbest declarations ever, put the craziest people in charge of shit I, I want to, and the country will feel obliged to take a knee, do what I tell them to do, because that's what a commander in chief gets to do. That's the only lesson he took away from the Bush administration. Yep, yep. Let's do our uh, news and review list and and jump in with extra sure. comments if any, at any time, right? Uh, okay, we're gonna blitz through this real quick or nice and slow, whichever you prefer. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, Donald Trump, as you know, uh, signed an executive order trying to kill the Affordable Care Act by putting rules in place uh, that let people uh, sell shitty policies, basically. Right. And eliminate the um, the subsidies for people who can't afford it, and and this is all just. Again, fragging the system. This is just tossing any piece of chaos he can into the system in order to kill it and then going on the Twitter and saying the, the Affordable Care Act is collapsing. Now, really, when you're standing outside the building with a can of gasoline in one hand and a lighter in the other and the building's on fire and you're pouring gas on it and tossing your lighter deeper into the fire – and then complaining the building's on fire. Who the fuck are you fooling? Yeah. I mean, and, and this is where the media starts starts to become the enemy as well. Um, significant portions of it. Because no matter how drastically evil the Republican Party behaves, they're apologists and they're both ciderists. And there's, well, but yeah, 
people still have 50% or more of the airtime on every station everywhere. They're still invited. You know, the, the political spectrum in this country of discussion has shifted from <laughs> – here's what it should be. Bernie Sanders on one end, Hillary Clinton on the other. <laughs> okay. Here's yeah. what it actually. Here's what it actually is. Um, and, it, and let me say that you and I would uh, love to have that debate. I would love and it. we would agree with both of them eighty three percent of the time. Absolutely. And they would agree with each other. And then there would be times that we would agree with Hillary Clinton, and right. there would be times we would agree with Bernie Sanders. Yes. Some people took offense. Two men took offense at your um, impersonation of Bernie Sanders. Well, that's two because they're not part of my revolution. Here's the problem with that, Luke Al. Hey, they don't see I the just need for the say, revolution. I say that while I'm drinking out of a Bernie Sanders coffee yeah, mug. come on. So, man. you know, I, and I did write to both. I hope I wrote to both. I know I wrote to one of them and said, yeah. you know, we've got the 15-year-old wearing Bernie Sanders T-shirts yeah. to school still. Yeah. So we tried to and, burn And we shirts. voted for Hillary in the general election enthusiastically yes. against Donald Trump. Yes. Okay? This is how so grown up So let's just be clear. <laughs> I understand that yes. everyone's sunburned and bruised and yeah. the slightest touch yeah. could set off a reaction. But right. you know what? If if I can't goof on my own podcast, um, <laughs> then the world is lost. If I can't dance as if no one's looking and God help right. them, help me right. if they're not looking because I can't dance. And, and, and we do make fun of ourselves and, yes. are, and are seriously working now mm -hmm. toward the future that mm -hmm. we want for our kids and our grandkids and everybody. And I am happy to talk with anyone who wants to change DNC rules or come up with a more fair structure sure. or talk about voter voter reform so that we get paper ballots and, and a paper trail and better security and so forth. And if you have constructive things to say about this went wrong in 2016. Here's how we fix it. Right. I'll have that conversation with you. If you want to say, here's what went wrong in 2016, and I want to smear that shit all over the walls of everything we're talking about rather than fix it. Right. I have no time for that because we have too much to yeah. do. I, and we're, we're not going to so, talk about Harvey Weinstein because I don't know who the fuck he is. And he never, you know, I never voted for him. I never listened to a tape of him grabbing woman's pussy and then I, said, well, hey, that I have something. I have something to say about Harvey Weinstein. Oh, and that, what, that that is that. Um, what offends uh, me is dragging Hillary Clinton in the middle of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And well, and NBC had a tweet this week. Uh, is Hillary to blame for Donald Trump? Right. You know, right. that is click. That's their clickbait of the week. That's that's uh, our tweet that we on this podcast will not be dragged into. No. We're not going to, no. And it proves that you're part of the problem. Right, because you can't, if, if you, you can't stop. Yeah, if, if the, the problem with media is illustrated by why isn't Hillary Clinton talking about blah, blah, blah. Right, if and then... Wanted, if you wanted to hear what Hillary Clinton thought of blah, 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 you should have elected her president. <laughs> Why, is, and, why isn't Hillary Clinton talking about blah, 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 followed immediately by why is Hillary Clinton sticking her nose into blah, blah, blah? Right, right. Oh, I guess she doesn't have to sit down and shut up now. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's, because, it's, it's yeah. safe to abuse her because yep. she's a punching bag. Right. And they they haven't figured out that kind of shit is what got us to Donald Trump. Well, and and it is so obviously a lifeboat for media to distract us yeah. From their complicity in getting Donald Trump elected. Yeah. Which brings us to New York Times. The, en the, en <laughs> the entry point, which is our our political discussion spectrum should be in a healthy society. Yes. Bernie right. Sanders to, to whoever you want on the right. right. I don't care. Tim Kaine. I don't care. Right. Pick somebody. But that's what we should be in. That is that that's the tent of our political discussion. That should be the spectrum. I don't give a shit on a shingle what Paul Ryan thinks of anything. He's mm -hmm. a liar and he's a fraud. He's proven it a million times. In any healthy political system, Paul Ryan would be rejected like a a, a horse organ transplanted into a human being. It would leap out of our chest. As a harmful extremist. As yeah. a harmful extremist. And they're yep. all harmful extremists because they built a party to create harmful extremists. Mm -hmm. But if you flip on television, and I'm talking about you, MSNBC, any goddamn night of the week, the, our political spectrum is um, on the left – David Frum, on yeah. the right, Hugh Hewitt, and we're gonna have a discussion <laughs> in, in this in this middle area. Hey, look, it's Jennifer Rubin. Hey, Jennifer, what, tell us what you think about shit. Oh yeah, it's and it's it's no, these are all Charlie Sykes. <laughs> these are yeah. all fucking Bush regime dead enders. Yep. Who flipped in the last twelve months? Mm -hmm. Because they figured out, holy shit, I can't squeeze another fucking nickel out of the monster I created. So I'm gonna get on board with the other side of this discussion. 
And I'm certainly not going to become a liberal because that would kill my career. I'm just going to become a never Trumper and, and the liberal network will put me on all goddamn day, all goddamn night, maybe even give my own show. Absolutely. So, and it's about it's not and it's not about policy. It's about being couth versus being uncouth right. and their disagreement with Donald Trump, which is something they will never talk about. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the the party platform, apart from the Russia part of it, Donald Trump didn't touch. No, no, that's Ukraine, the whole thing. He touched the Ukraine part of it. And there therein lies the rub. Yeah. But. Every other part of the the platform that Donald Trump ran on was the Republican Party's platform. And every one of these people would be totally on board with it if Marco Rubio proposed the exact Yeah, or Jeb exact Bush. Thing. Exactly. So exactly. don't kid yourself. These are people are not your friends. And as I've said before to you privately, I might have said this on the podcast before, the only goddamn thing I want to hear from Charlie Sykes is where the exhaust port is on the Death Star. Mm-hmm. It's the only said that use. last week, yeah. Yes. That's the, yep. that's the only utility any of these people have for me. How do mm-hmm. I blow up the monstrous machine you built? You created. If, if yep. you can't show me the blueprints, I don't give a shit what you have to say about anything. Because right. you built this. What I want you to do is do what a decent man would do. Go into the wilderness for 10 years and atone for your goddamn sins. Not show up on, on MSNBC going, hi, kids. You remember how much I used to call you a traitor and make my dollars there? Well, now I'm going, Donald Trump's a monster. I wonder how that happened. And they're going to pay me the same and salary. And cash my way. check. Yeah. 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 And by the way, I All right. we need it. to change. We need to keep going here. Number two, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump tweeted, we cannot keep federal relief workers in Puerto Rico forever. And and I will say there were a number of Republican congressmen and senators, including ours, yep. who went, oh, no, that's yeah. not. That's not even acceptable. how long have we so, had troops in Afghanistan? Yeah, right, right. Um, and, okay, and, and and while he's not doing that, mind you, every insane tweet you get from President Stupid is your tax dollars at work. Yeah, your and, tax and he dollars. can delete them at will, and he can del- he can block people at will right. because he is arguing before the courts now that he's in charge of record keeping for the White House, right. and so, so whatever he wants to do is fine. If I throw yep. him away, that's, that's not none of your damn business. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's dicking around with the Iran deal. I believe this in after- in 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 contradiction to his own national security yes. staff. In contradiction to who everyone, have told him that Iran is obeying the deal, right. that they are in compliance with the deal, that it is better for them to be in compliance than not in compliance. His own national security staff is telling him. And he is still blowing up. Sure, Why? Because, because, because of, it's a reality TV show. It's not an administration. Right. And re, and wagging your dick at the villains on your on your professional wrestling show will right. make the gas sippers of sister fuck Arkansas love you that much more. Right. And That's it's all why. about ratings for those people. All right. And three Scott quick, Pruitt. Scott Pruitt. Oh. Three hits on Scott Pruitt. Number one. The phrase climate change does not appear anywhere in the EPA's draft for your strategy plan. Number two. Scott Pruitt wants to eliminate the federal tax credits for the wind and solar power industries. And number three, he announced the war on coal is over because he's rolling back all the Obama era protections on clean air. Yeah, and doing the the clean power res- the clean power initiative is is something he doesn't want. No. Uh, so uh, the Republican Party is now anti clean air. You know, I'd always said argue clean air, clean water. I was wrong. Uh, I thought that. If you argue clean air, clean water, that you wouldn't get Republicans against you. But it turns oh. out Scott Pruitt is more than willing to be against that. Yeah, he's an evil. Uh, we are speaking evil. from a home right. that is powered by coal. Uh-huh. I'm not going to deny that. Nope. We are speaking from a city that owns a coal-fired power plant. Yes. Our city revenue is dependent on a coal-fired power plant that the city owns. And that and loses money loses every money year. money every year. Yeah. And this is the local thing that's going on. And I am so grateful that we have local representatives of the Sierra Club mm-hmm. in our community. Uh, in that, our church. That we know personally, yeah, yeah, in our church that we know personally who are being very vocal about what's going on in our local city with power and uh, losing money and, um, you know, ripping off the city and its customers. Right. Because this is so inefficient. And uh, and just the fact that we've just kept doubling down on this is the source of our revenue and we're not going to change is is irresponsible. So, yes. And it's and it's it's dumb. Yeah. And and they and and they've gotten the Girl Scouts involved. So, you know. Oh, yeah. The Sierra Club got the Girl Scouts involved, by the way. Boy, uh, thumbs down on the Boy Scouts this week saying we're going to admit girls. Yeah. If if there was ever a an admission <laughs> that girls run the world, yeah. 
and we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and we've had bad press for the past five years, and you haven't. So we're going right. to let you come in Please and come. save our asses. Please come bake cookies for us. And the the executive director of the Girl Scouts of America said, uh, we're not impressed, and yeah. we're not interested and we're not going to help you with this now the the basic on the ground mm -hmm. um boy scout mission mm -hmm. is is i'm delighted i'm fine with it i'm yep. teaching you know the the, the we, our church is used as a as a scout headquarters yeah they yeah. help out there they show up all the time i'm always thrilled to see them the whole idea of scouting and reliance and teaching practical skills and respect for the environment respect for yep. for grown-ups and elders yep. and so on and so forth right i got no problem with that i think that's all wonderful it's the administration of that from the top that has been right. a, uh, a disaster. A disaster. And uh, I also think, too, the emphasis of the Girl Scouts of America, because I've watched both of these groups personally and up close. Yep. Um, there really is in the Girl Scouts of America a mission to teach girls to change the world. Yes. How to write to your le how to write a letter to the editor. How to go visit your congressman. How to how to uh, put together a petition. Mm -hmm. How. And and they they go to the state house and they issue their little bill on state bird or whatever it yep. is. It's usually something to do with the environment and yeah. something natural, which is scouting, you know. Yep. Uh, and get their their bill passed and get to see what happens and get right. to see it it walk through the process. So that when you graduate from college, <laughs> when you go to college, you have all these tools in your toolbox of, look, something's wrong on campus. Something's wrong in my community. I know how to do this. Yep. We got the state bird to be the whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. we did yeah. that. I know how to do this. So when it comes to something much more complicated as special education for kids or, you know, roads and bridges, whatever it is, I have all those tools in my toolbox. And that's the Girl Scouts have done that. And I haven't a... seen, what I've seen with the Boy Scouts is camping and community service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not this kind of social political action that I think is what kids need. As a brief aside, I would like mm -hmm. to say that both junior dude and middle child are now involved in their school governments. Yes. <laughs> and their school governments have been more productive in the last six months. Than the Republican in the Congress, last six days. In the last six days. The Republican Congress has been in seven uh, years in, extant. in seven years yeah. doing doing harm. Right. Uh, it's absolutely true. Um, and <laughs> junior child and junior Jude and middle child both yes. are. Yeah. Like, you know, student council. Like this yeah. is just their thing. And I don't know where they picked this up. <laughs> I couldn't imagine where they picked uh, it up. Hmm? But uh, yeah, both of them are. Uh, involved junior dude is now on in campus democrats he's doing stuff with uh they just had a big uh powwow about gun control uh -huh. <clears throat> excuse me a big powwow about gun control where um you know junior dude it, they had this whole discussion about it and looked at the spectrum of uh on one side of the spectrum no guns on the other side of the spectrum guns everywhere all the time and where people were on the spec that spectrum and then and then once they sort of discussed initially where they were on that spectrum they they broke up and talked about it and uh junior dude called and to say what a good discussion it was and how imp how many people talked about mental health in terms of an investment <laughs> and that you can't just say mental health Right. You know, as a way to not talk about the NRA. And then cut the and, budget for mental health. And then cut health. the budget for mental health. Right. And they really got that. So th there's a lot going on that's good in the in the state and local and school level and so forth. We need to remember that and be grateful for it. There are kids doing amazing things, younger people doing amazing things that are changing the world and making it a better place. Count your blessings, folks. Speaking I know these mental, are hard days. Speaking of mental health. <laughs> Donald Trump wants a lot more nukes. A lot. And that was the moment when his secretary of state said, fucking moron. Fucking moron. And apparently uh, in response to the that NBC News story or some related uh -huh. story, Donald Trump said the NBC broadcast license should be suspended, pu pulled. Pulled or whatever. You know, to having letting people write whatever they want in the media is bad for America. You know, wow. And it turns out that the FCC doesn't issue a license to networks, no. only to local affiliates yeah. and – uh, that once again, so-called president made a stupid. He doesn't know how I, anything works. I he mean, doesn't know how nothing. any of this he works. Know how anything <laughs> not works. How any it's of this works. Not a thing. Uh, Carter Page, remember Carter Page, sweaty bald Carter Page, who, who was willing to talk to anybody on a bus anywhere, <laughs> go on Chris Hayes' show, babble incoherently. Apparently, 
he's discovered someone that he's not going to talk to. And that someone was the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, and he says, he's not going to cooperate. I'm not going to do it. If you make me come, I'm going to plead the fifth. So that will go over very well. Watching sweaty, creepy Carter Page pleading the fifth, uh, I'm sure will do wonders for the Trump administration reputation. Uh, and Kate... it's, it's so obvious. I mean, this this guy lived in Russia for eons and eons and eons and is so clearly, I mean, all right, I'm done. I'm done. Carter Page is a mole. I'm just, it's I'm it's done. <laughs> uh, Cambridge Analytica, speaking of Russia, uh, is now part of the Russian probe. It, it, About time. There's some remarkable overlap and remarkable targeting uh, similarities between the Trump campaign and the, and the now clearly acknowledged Russian attack on our election system in favor of Donald Trump and to undermine Hillary Clinton. The, uh, via just, Facebook. Via Facebook, Twitter. Um, targeted ads, ads that purport to be Black Lives Matter, ads, and just very, you know, this is this was a, a PSYOP operation. This is a government Absolutely. psychological attack on our system and might very well have also been a physical attack on the, on the voter rolls. But yeah. the places they targeted were the places that Trump won by just enough votes to win. And they used, the, the big terms that they used on Facebook, we've, it was announced today, uh, to target these were Sharia law and uh, illegal immigration. Right. That's where they went. Yeah. Uh, I wonder whose yeah. buttons those are. Yeah, right. <laughs> but they figured out. I mean, they figured out. Here's the here's the part that just breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. The Russian government, Vladimir Putin, figured out what liberals have been saying for 30 years, which is yep. this country is divided. One half of this country, or or half of the electorate, I should say, a third of the country are nuts, and they will believe yep. anything as long as it's it use these code words. The right. only reason Donald Trump is president is he used the proper vocabulary to talk to the pig people and tell them he was one of them. You mm -hmm. plug that 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 uh, that algorithm into Facebook and you win yep. because they believe this shit. Speaking of Donald Trump, Republicans and close advisors are describing him as unstable, losing a step and unraveling, which uh, comes as a surprise to no one, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Do you remember, uh, do you remember um, um, Old School, the movie? Yeah. Will Ferrell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, think about think, – remember him streaking naked and drunk to the quad? Sure. Because we're going to all go to the quad and we're going to streak the quad. And he's running down the street naked all by himself and nobody's following him. Yep. That's Bob Corker. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a senator and he gets to keep his job until he – you know, until his term is up. But uh, Bob Corker let it just hung it right out there and said, look, everybody's talking about the fact this guy's fucking crazy. He's crazy. He needs to be put in, you know, a, 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 the five point restraints and wheeled out of the White House. And I know that means Mike Pence, but the guy's out of his fucking tree. And we all talk about it all the time. That's all we do. We sit around in the sauna, jerking each other off, talking about the fact that Donald Trump is a lunatic and the country's in danger. But, you know, maybe tax cuts. Uh, and so he took all, off all his clothes, got drunk, and ran to the quad, and nobody's following him <laughs> because it's a party made of cowards and imbeciles and con. And they racists. want their tax they cuts. Their tax and they all, everybody admits off camera, we're just waiting to get the tax cuts. And the reason for that is because the donors own them. Yep. This is nothing but absolutely the Mercers and the Cokes and the rest of their big dollar donors insisting that if you don't if you don't fucking deliver. This mm -hmm. is this is Stuart, what's his name? Best. Yeah. From, right. This is Stuart Best. This is a completely off topic, but uh Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown, Karen, yeah. Uh uh Stuart Best, who was running for office and said crazy shit and he told her off camera, You gotta save me from mm -hmm. this. I, I I made a lot of crazy promises to a lot of really dangerous people. That is how the entire Republican uh, federal government, the entire Republican Party and the state and local governments too, got elected. They made yep. a lot of crazy promises to a lot of really dangerous rich people who are going to absolutely roast them alive if they don't deliver this time. And that's why all of this shit is happening. Those crazy crackpot billionaires also are deeply involved in the media, which is why the media will not come out and say – the reason that these cowards and racists and morons are so hellbent on tax cuts is because the Republican Party is a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries. Next up. And 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 all of that Coke money flows through the Republican Party to the networks and to the cable news. And that's your political ads fund those places and pay the salaries of everybody there, which is why you have Charlie Sykes on, yeah. because Charlie Sykes' job is to – and. and and especially uh, the former RNC chair, whose name is Michael Steele. Michael Steele. Mm -hmm. His job is to fill the space off season between, you know, ads for Viagra and uh, skin ailment, skin ailment remedies, whatever it is, and 
it's amazing actually the 11th hour is almost 100 percent over the counter drug ads over the counter drug ads uh and yeah, and, the, and the padding in there is all charlie sykes and a bunch of republicans yep, and yep, and brian yep. williams showing why belating everyone yeah, showing yes, why yes. a he's the most desperate man on television mm-hmm. and b oh my god he really is just a hollow thing he's yeah. just a hollow stool that they hired to sit in that studio and correct during why? The election year and during the election year it's campaign ad one campaign ad after the other yeah. and that's where they make their money and they know it and so the Koch brother money, uh, it they that's why the that's why the media is complicit, and especially these local uh, affiliates really depend yep. on political ads. They jack up their prices during during election years because they can, and that's where they make their black their money. That's how they they're not in the red. So. We know we know this system is corrupt. Yeah, <laughs> from we just have no. We, we have I'm no. Gonna, I'm going to finish these up, Drift Glass. Please go, we're already go. Too long. Roll. Uh, Pence walkout stunt blows up in his face. No one cares because we're on to the next thing. Right. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, unbelievably stupid and craven. And they talked and... about it. I mean, Donald Trump played his hands, played his hand cards up. Yes, right. I told him to do this because ha ha ha. Okay, uh, <laughs> you know, liars call. Uh, Donald Trump has made 1,318 false or misleading claims over the past 263 days. That's an average of five claims a day. And it has gotten worse since the six-month mark because he can. Because he can. And it is a way he exerts power over people is he can lie and get away with it. And multiply that that number by 100 because all of his spokespeople... Uh, amplify yep. his lies and, and repeat his lies. So, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's why, in a way, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is worse than Donald Trump in that she knows he's lying and doesn't care. Right. Um, Facebook, Google, and Twitter employees were embedded inside the Trump campaign mm-hmm. uh, to help sell ads, you know, help them cater their advertising. At Twitter announced today, too, that um, some of the uh, Russian records of sales and so forth, promotional stuff, is deleted. And they can't get it back. Yep. So, uh, too bad. Uh, for those keeping score, the CHIP program, Children's Health Insurance, expired two weeks ago. And now Republicans want concessions to renew it. Of they're, course they do. They're holding children hostage. They are holding children's health insurance hostage mm-hmm. for concessions. Uh, this has never happened before. No. Trump still actively sabotaging the ACA. And uh, we've talked about that. Trump, Russia. Trump, Russia. Trump, Russia. Yeah. It's not going away. Uh, it's not it's going not anywhere. Away. And uh, Mueller is still on the case. I know it takes a long time, but hey, you know, mm-hmm. we are the liberal media. This is the Professional Life Podcast, Cornfield Resistance. Boom. Fists in the air. We love you guys. Mm-hmm. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Layla. Layla. Layla is a polydactyl and Another multiple one. toes. Yeah. We haven't had, it's been a while since we had a polydactyl, but uh, we love our multi toed internet kitties as well. And here is Layla in all her glory. You will see, she's very relaxed. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air. Unless you say otherwise, don't forget to visit our website, proleftpod.com, for downloadable Go Postal Union stickers for your holiday mail. Yeah. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local, and we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. If you're looking for Halloween costumes and you're going to buy yours from a big box store, come on, man. Come on. Click our link and go over to Amazon. Take a look at what they have first. Okay. It is now time to announce the first winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxwise.biz. Mm-hmm. Check out our website to see how great they look. Uh, the one we're giving away says resist, has snowflakes on either side along <laughs> with our URL. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, by the way, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG, Drift Glass Blue Gal, DGBG2017. That gives you 20% off anything, including custom orders at foxwise.biz. Dot biz, B-I-Z. Our winner this week is A-Y from Baltimore, Maryland, who has been contributing five bucks a month since earlier this year. So thank you for doing that, A-Y. And I'll be emailing you. You win the bracelet or cuff and a $5 gift card to donorschoose.org. Holy crap. Uh, well, yeah, we, this means we have an actual sponsor, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Well, well donorschoose.org never sponsored anything with me. I just sponsor them, and no, I, I mean, really I do. I mean, Foxwise. 
Foxwise is an actual help out, help us, helping us out with this contest. Yes, yeah, they are. Yeah. Oh my God! Let's let's pause uh, for a moment and breathe in the joy <laughs> of having an actual having non-fictional an actual sponsor. Having person giving us, uh, she she is giving us merch to give away. Mm-hmm. So we, oh, are, we have we two. Appreciate that. Theology OP and and oh my God! Yeah, the we're racking the them up OP here. Who is yeah. gonna? Theology OP is. Uh, apparently going to start her own business on doing for other websites what she's done for ours. Oh. And, uh, we are fully supportive of her in doing that. Um, Absolutely. You'll be hearing more about that in upcoming episodes. Yeah. So, yes, uh, AY from Baltimore wins a bracelet cuff and a $5 gift card to DonorsChoose.org. And we so appreciate your support, AY. Those $5 monthly donors pay our electric bill, by they the do. way. They do. They do. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think Mr. Robot is still the bomb diggity, which is a thing kids say, I'm told. 20 years ago. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switch play night. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.